Y254, Robert Osoro. It is the touchline. We are here to talk about everything that is comes when it comes to world football. But it's a big day because tomorrow it is the Africa Cup of Nations final. And I've got two people here in studio who were here when we were doing a preview to the start of the Africa Cup of Nations and they made their prediction. And now we are here when we are going to the final of the Africa Cup of Nations. What have they got to say? Erika Ganya is joining us here in studio to talk about everything. How are you doing, my brother? I'm good. I'm good, my brother. Yeah. I'm happy. Uh, Senegal is in the <laughs> That was a prediction. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was my prediction. Uh -huh. And that was my team to, to carry the trophy. So yeah. hopefully tomorrow we are going to carry it. Wow, big one for Senegal. Yours was Algeria. Yeah. They do not yeah. make it. Yeah, and, and again, for the second time, we need to apologize to everyone <laughs> who bought into Algeria winning the Africa Cup of Nations yes. and left out with a goal. Uh -huh. No win. Yeah. And good work. And by the way, yes. I say that Egypt was the worst team among the Maghreb regions. Yes. Yeah, they are in the, yeah, they are in the yeah. final. Everything has just crumbled. Yeah. yeah. Before we talk about the main game in the Africa Cup of Nations, which is the uh, Senegal versus Egypt, how has the Africa Cup of Nations has been for you? Uh, it has been, uh, we have had uh, lows and uh, highs. highs yes. uh, the lows uh, is to do with officiating. Officiating uh -huh, uh, yeah. has been wanting. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe to some extent preparation yes. of uh, the whole thing. Yeah. But uh, entertainment wise, we have had teams that have really stepped up. Burkina uh -huh. Faso, yes. uh, Comoros. Uh -huh. uh, Comoros gave up a good fight. Yeah. And um, th that was unexpected. Yeah. Nobody expected. Uh, as he said, mm -hmm. everybody was expected expecting the likes of Ivory Coast, the likes uh -huh. of Algeria yes. to proceed, yeah. but uh, we had a few surprises. Is, is it a chance of people underrating Burkina Faso all the time, not knowing that Burkina Faso is a team that performs in the Africa Cup of Nations? I think for the last four editions, Burkina Faso has been in the semi-finals. Yeah, apart yeah. from missing the African Championships in 2019, yes. they have had very good uh -huh. uh, runs you yes. because you look at 2013 uh -huh. getting to the final losing to nigeria mm -hmm. and then they made it to fourth place in the 2015 africa cup of nations yeah they have a very good crop of players and by the way i was researching about their team and it's not as if they have the classiest of players in uh -huh. there apart from yes. Bertrand Traore, yeah they don't have any other guy apart okay i know Ed edmond tabsoba has been mm -hmm. one of the highlights for the for the team yes. playing in defense very good guy by leverkusen mm -hmm. he's already getting some links to other top clubs in europe yes you look at other guys like maybe Gustavo Sangare, uh -huh. you look at Bayo. Yes. They are playing for teams like Aras Barkane, mm -hmm. they are playing for those Al Ali teams and Zamalek. Mm -hmm. They have a very good crop of good players yeah. that and they are so young. Mm -hmm. So you can actually dream about them making it through. Because you are talking about the likes of Bansi, uh -huh. you're talking about Jonathan Petroipas missing yeah. from the, the championship and looking moving away from the team. They have integrated themselves so well that you can realize that this is a team that doesn't have those players right yes. now. Yeah, so it has been a good kind of shift from them. And yeah, they showed us that they can do it. And one guy from that team, Issa Kabore, uh -huh. who played on, at the right back position. Yeah. I was researching about him. He plays for tries, he's on loan for Manchester City. Mm -hmm. Many are now saying that he could be the hire yeah. to kind of at, at Manchester City. Yeah, he's got a chance <laughs> to get into that position. Yeah. But also, uh, People never thought that uh, Africa Cup of Nations is a big, uh, to big team tournament anymore because we we had I think uh, eight teams coming on who are making their debut when it comes to the Africa Cup of Nations, and they made their name. The yeah, legs yeah. of Gambia, the legs of Comoros coming onto the side of the Africa Cup of Nations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see that th there are surprises, uh, mm. and uh, that, that that for competition is a good thing. Uh -huh. It's a good thing because uh, it brings in, uh, it it eliminates the the, the, the sense of uh, big team mentality. Yes. Everybody expecting the Nigeria, Nigeria. Uh -huh. yeah. They had a good score, they uh -huh. didn't perform. Algeria, yeah. they had uh -huh. a good score, they didn't perform. Yes. They didn't even leave the group stages. Morocco. Morocco. Yeah. Uh, Morocco. Uh, Ivory Coast. Uh, yes. Look at uh, the players who are playing in Europe, uh -huh. the big name players. Yeah. But you see, these small teams are coming with homegrown players. Yes. Our players were playing somewhere, Malawi. maybe in, in, in Africa. Yeah. Equatorial Guinea. Equatorial Guinea. Look at yeah. Equatorial Guinea. Uh -huh. It gave the big teams a run for their money. Yeah. And uh, uh, look at Comoros. Uh -huh. Comoros with all those uh, issues to do with COVID, uh -huh. the red card. Yes. And they still won the hearts of everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because everybody you meet tells you, Cameroon won that game, but yeah. Comoros won our hearts. Uh -huh. And, uh, and uh, you look at a country like that with a population of uh, less than 2 million people. Yes, and less than a million. million. And, million. <laughs> <laughs> and they are like they yes. are giving everybody a run for their money. Yes. That's really encouraging. Mm -hmm. And that's a challenge to, to now us as Kenya. Yes. 
where did the rain start beating us? Uh -huh. Because look at Burkina Faso. Yeah. There was a time we beat Burkina Faso 3-0. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh, 2004, yes. Tunisia, our yes, last yes. game. Yeah. They went down <laughs> and rebuilt. And as, yes. as he said, yeah. he has noted something very important about uh -huh. Burkina Faso. Yes. They have a very young squad. Yeah. And they if you look looked at their game, mm -hmm. they are so relaxed. Yeah. Yeah. They are not panicking. Mm -hmm. They are just knocking the ball around. It's yeah. one of the teams that was really knocking the ball around yeah. and yes. you start enjoying. Yeah. I saw the, I watched their game against Cape Verde. Yes. It was a nice game. And one of the big things about the Africa Cup of Nations this time round has got to be the homegrown coaches. Mm -hmm. Talk about Ali Sisi. Yes. Talk about the Burkina Faso coach. Mm -hmm. These are most of them are homegrown coaches. The Nigerian coach. Yes, uh, he yeah. was one of the dream teams of Nigeria back in 96, 98 World Cup. Yeah. Never know about him, but you look at the setup of teams, and we've got to enjoy that growth in African football. Yeah, and even even going into the final, I know Carlos Queiroz is yes. not uh, an African, but he was born in Namibia, uh -huh. so he's also an African he's there. Also an African. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Into yes, you just have to love the kind of support that they're getting in. Mm -hmm. You know, when you talk about even Alio Sisi getting his time at the national team 2017, there uh -huh. wasn't so much hype around him. Yes, but in that period, they have gone into two African finals out of three, yes. and then they, into the, they got into the World Cup in 2018, mm -hmm. and here there's a chance for them not to win their first African title. Uh -huh. I was even going through that uh, coach where you talked about uh, from Burkina Faso. Uh -huh. You can imagine that he was a policeman. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. He was a policeman and he was <laughs> trying to get a move where he would go up the ranks. He was uh -huh. going to school, yes. and then he was approached. And he, wa he was so interested about learning the systems of football. Yes. And here he is at mm -hmm. around 60 years of age. Yes. He's doing it. Uh, then you've got these other crop of play uh, of coaches that I feel like we cannot call them Africans because they have served African football mm -hmm. for so long. Like yes. I was talking about Seinfeld. Mm -hmm. He's a man who's gone through the ranks and he was in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. He was supposed to be the football director there. And then there was a bit of a, of a hustle in there. And he went into the, the, the Gambia team. Yes. He's doing a very good job there. So. I think there is good future around these African players, even when you talk about them in big clubs like Alali. Mm -hmm. Pizzo Mosimano was talking about how good Burkina Faso's coach was. So I, I feel like there is a future for African coaches now to believe themselves and do the job actually because they can do it. Because uh, I was talking to uh, producer, director Fadili, yeah. and uh, <coughs> in my thinking, I'm like, Ali Sise is now on a class to coach a European team. And they can do very well, like club level in Europe. So will they give him? Th th that's the, yeah, that's that's the biggest. Because will they trust him with that? You see, mm -hmm. uh, there's that mentality that uh, African or black coaches cannot make it, mm -hmm. especially in Europe. They just yeah. struggle. Mm -hmm. We've seen uh, uh, very many even retired players who've played uh, in Europe struggling mm -hmm. uh, to, to move into coaching. Yes. And uh, uh, it, it has to change. And it has to change in this way. African teams, let us trust our African, our black coaches, mm -hmm. give them an opportunity uh, to, to showcase what they can be able to do. Not yes. only at the national team, even at the club level. Yes. Because if they are at the club level uh, and uh, uh, they are able to, to excel, mm -hmm. then we will be selling something out there. Yes. Because the likes of Value CC are putting Africa on the, on the map in yeah. terms of coaching. You know, so one of the things is when we were coming on to the Africa Cup of Nations, uh, when we were talking about it, one of the biggest talking points all over the world was we don't need this tournament in January. We don't need this tournament when we are in mid-season and everything. But it has gone ahead to be one of the best tournaments we have watched so far. Yes, because yeah. you see, uh, uh, there's that aspect of we don't need it in January. Yeah. But this is what make, makes us Africa. That, that's what distinctive it, factor. Yes. You see, the, the South Americans <laughs> have bears. <laughs> <laughs> they are bears. Eh? Yeah. So this, this is our African way. And yes. we say Af yeah. Africa, it is Africa, and Africa is our business. Yes. Uh, we are going to do it in, in, in January. Yeah. And uh, it's going to be fun. It's yeah. been fun. Yes. And uh, you see, uh, uh, even uh, the European players who are reluctant to come mm -hmm. uh, have really exerted the likes yeah. of Sadio Mane, the likes of Mo Salah, yes. are now in the final. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you see, we, we have to send that message yeah. that uh, we have this tournament, it's here, yeah. it's going to stay. Uh, okay. Have okay. we been vindicated, Sam, because you are not for it? Okay, uh, it's not as if I'm against the AFCON. Yes. What I'm against is that they're holding it in a time where they have to disrupt the season. Uh -huh. Where coaches are now to think about losing their big players going out to Africa. Mm -hmm. The last week has been so boring for many people because they haven't been watching any European football. Uh -huh, yes. The reason why Conminebol approached mm -hmm. FIFA, approached mm -hmm. the leagues, mm -hmm. and they decided to suspend the league yes. for those two weeks when they be out for qualifiers. I thought that that was the same route 
Calf yeah. should have taken. Yeah. Let's suspend the league, let these guys play, and then you can get back to the normal calendar. Yeah. That's the only thing that I'm against, that mm. you're disrupting a season, mm -hmm. and now you'll have all this backlash coming to you, have all these uh -huh. questions coming to you, and yes. then you're going to put the racism card in. didn't make sense to me. But so far, it has been a good tournament. It's been a good tournament, because... Mm. As I talked about those unpredictabilities yes. with these small nations and mm -hmm. they're proving themselves. Yeah. And also we've seen other guys rebuild themselves, you know. Mm -hmm. Nicolas Pepe didn't have the best of times at Arsenal. He's come up and he's had huge numbers. Mm -hmm. And also Namplis Mendy, who's playing as a defensive midfielder for Senegal. Mm -hmm. He wasn't part of the 25-man squad for Leicester City. Yes. How he has performed, mm -hmm. he's now being mm -hmm. called mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. He's in the 25-man squad for Leicester City. Mm -hmm. So it's been mix and match. You yeah. have some very good players that have shown themselves up. Yeah. And the small nations rising up. Yeah. Some nations have an attached captain, it's like Equatorial Guinea. Uh -huh. He had an attached captain. <laughs> yeah. And you have others playing for teams like Aris Limassol mm -hmm. in, Cip in in the Cypriot League. Yeah. And they're showing themselves up. So you would expect some names to be called up. And some of the big names that uh, were, were never made it uh, onto the final also, even onto the medal bracket, the likes of Nigeria, the likes of Tunisia, the likes of Morocco, Algeria, Ivory Coast, Ghana. I think the, <laughs> among all those, the, the biggest disappointment was Algeria yes. because uh, everybody expected that, that uh, being the defending champions, mm -hmm. they would at least make it uh, from the group stages. Yes, uh, they didn't do that. Mm -hmm. uh, you look at Nigeria, poor organization in mm -hmm. the last game. Yeah. They, they, they didn't they make it. Uh, they, were, they, they were knocked out. Look mm -hmm. at uh, Ivory Coast. Yes, what was Bailey thinking? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know that, 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 that there has to be some seriousness, some professionalism, some love for your country. Yes. The whole country is resting on your shoulders, yes. and uh, you're taking a penalty like that. You know, we were talking about it uh, in my local where I watch football, and I would love to be in that place. Right I, 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 I told a friend of mine. Uh, this is why people get killed uh, in yes, Colombia yes. back in the day. Yeah. Because and you saw the same thing even in Sierra Leone. <laughs> There's a player yeah. who missed a penalty uh, and becomes around this place. Yes. Um, because the sports brings people together. Yeah. And one of the heights of sports is emotion. It, it's very, especially <laughs> football is very especially passionate. Football. It is very emotional. People yeah. are invested in yeah. the emotions in yeah. there. So, see, I remember I, I was watching a documentary because back then we were young mm. in '94 uh, when Escobar was killed. Yeah, he yeah, was yeah. scoring an own goal, mm. which was he could not prevent it. Yeah. It was because of bad luck. Mm. But going back home, those guys don't care about uh, yeah. <laughs> accidents you and luck and everything. The whole country. Yes. We will uh, put all uh, our hopes on you. Yes. And and you look at something uh, mm. in the in the in the African Cup of Nations and uh, the Maghreb countries like mm -hmm. uh, Egypt, there's that seriousness they take. That's Look at the seriousness. Was, yes. Yeah. They're they taking mm -hmm. those penalties. They've survived yeah. twice, I think. In, uh, yeah, uh, twice. Yeah. Yeah. twice. Yeah. yeah, they've played extra minutes all their games. Yeah, 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 Ivory yeah. Coast and uh, now in uh, and Morocco. Against, uh, yeah. They also played against Morocco extra yes. time. Extra time. Yeah. Yeah. Now they have survived through penalties twice. Yes. Yes. Look at the ruthlessness in taking the penalties. Oh mm -hmm. yes. they're, they're, they're so ruthless. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, they are not going, going there to, to sugarcoat anything. They're going yes. there to do a job. They're looking at it. Do your job. No fancy run-ups. No showbiz. Runs, no, yeah. fancy, no showbiz. Yeah. Our African players. <laughs> yeah, African too. No, they, they now they. Yeah. Look at what Cameroon was doing. What were they doing? I very poor penalty. I, I was talking to some of uh, of camera, yeah. and for me it is that seriousness. And African players need to get out of showbiz business. Exactly, showbiz business. Yeah. Look at these Ghanaian players, even from Asamoah, Jan yeah. in 2010. Yes. Yes. They, they are pulling their shorts down. <laughs> yes. Now yes. they are pulling the mirror, mm. showing us their ties. You're like, what's wrong with this guy? Concentrate on yeah. playing football. Yeah. That's why that's you are. Yeah. 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 Yes, yeah. play football. The Maghreb players are there. You want to dance, there. dance in the, yeah. in the, in the dressing room, yeah. like that. Ay, yeah, yeah. Look at the, the seriousness. Mm. You see, the Maghreb players, mm. they are taking it as a job. Yes, it's, this is a job. Yeah, very professional. Mm -hmm. Our now the black players are not really being professional yes. because uh, what was Bailey? Me, I can't even think. Bailey, you want to a no look penalty? Because a no look. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> yeah, from a defender. Yeah. Seriously, from a defender. Yes. You're not a, a regular penalty taker. Yes. At Manchester United, you don't take penalties. Yeah. <laughs> you see, for no, a regular because of penalty, name, because yes. of the name that you Eric Bailey playing for yes. Manchester yes. United, yes. you've got a chance to. You've got a chance to represent to your country. Yes. And when you're representing your country, do it. Do it mm -hmm. like a job. Yes. Because they had played the game very well, mm -hmm. and now they were knocked out. Yeah. Look at Egypt at that, they, they sailed through. Uh -huh. They went and played against Morocco, they, they were so ruthless. Yeah. Uh -huh. Look at what they did against Cameroon. Yeah. Cameroon are just 
I can't understand. <laughs> yeah, the, you know, you, you're watching Egypt, and it's something that I updated on my Facebook page. Mm. It's something that there is this study called XG, when mm -hmm. you have the goal probability, yes. and you're looking at the game and how it goes. Cameroon had the highest goal yeah. prob probability yes. in that yes. game because they played a really brilliant game, mm -hmm. and you thought they were going to win it. But then Egypt has been doing that all the time. Yeah. Yes, they have been forcing draws, going to extra time, and yes. winning it on penalty. Mm -hmm. yeah. That makes me believe that XG doesn't matter in football yes. again. Yeah. yeah, but it's been it's been a, a good tournament for for Egypt because they worked on what they should do. Yeah. They're very solid because I was looking at some of the combinations they've been doing, mm -hmm. especially in defense. Yeah. They have lots of Alahli players and Zamalek players. Uh -huh. So at times you have even Ahmed Egaz, you know, he's playing for Al Ittihad. He's moving into defense, yes. and then you have him moving into the middle, and he's not that kind of a ball player because they are now using Mohamed El Leni, mm -hmm. who's now a ball player, and he's yes. doing a really good job, uh -huh. especially when pushing the team forward. So it's been a brilliant combination of players that are somehow unorthodox because they don't look so fancy <laughs> yes. when you're watching them. You don't really expect Egypt scholars of goals, yeah. but they are so solid and they're clearing up mess. Yeah. Especially that player called Abdel M. Mohammadi. He's been playing some really good football yeah. and he's been one of the guys that has been mentioned to be a guy that goes away from Malahi and makes himself into Europe. Uh, and and you see, that, that one says something, uh, 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 what Sam is saying, uh, strengthening the local league. You uh -huh. see, for the Egyptians, yeah. they have strengthened their local league. Yes. Because most of, if you look at that team, most of the players are playing at home. Mm -hmm. So if they are at Al Hali, there are three or four players, they, they understand one another. Yes. And you see, you can only do that if you pay players well, mm -hmm. if you manage that league well. Yeah. So that these players don't have the desire to go to Europe because yes. you're paying them good salaries. Yeah. Yeah. And you see, that's what Egypt has done. Uh, and they're, 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 it's, it's paying for them. Even it's most paying. of the players are from the East African region, even from the Southern region. Yes. They, they want that chance to play in the Maghreb region. I think uh, yes, the, 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 the salaries are good. And that's why they, 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 they get pizza from down in South Africa yeah. to yeah. coach Al Ahali uh, because yes. they can yeah. be able to afford him. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they you can see, bring even Pasito from Brighton. Exactly. Yes. For because yeah. when, when you manage your league properly, mm -hmm. uh, money will be pumped in by sponsors. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that should reflect to us here. Mm -hmm. right. A big one. It is the Africa Cup of Nations final tomorrow between Senegal and Egypt. Robert Osoro here at the touchline. Eric Aganya, he is here. He predicted Senegal is going to be in the final and is going to lift it. Some team never made it into the knockout stage. What is called a goal? But <laughs> let, let, <laughs> I need to say something about Algeria yeah. because I feel like it's something that needs to be addressed here. Yeah. Yeah. I was looking at their squad and their roster. Yeah. Yeah. They have over six players who are 30 plus. Yes. And even Rian Mares is on that list. He's, yeah. on, he's 30 years old. Yeah, yeah. Baghdad Buneja, mm -hmm. they are depending on Islam Slimani. Mm -hmm. All the time. Who's 33? Who's 33, yeah. yeah. Mm. They have Sofian Fegul. Yeah. They have Belaili. Uh -huh. All those guys. Aisa Mandi, who is now even not a starter for Villarreal. Yes. All these players are over 30. Mm -hmm. I feel like the Algerian nation should be shocked and should be worried about what will happen to them in the future. They need to bring in young players. They need young those young players. players. Yeah. They have a few. Uh -huh. I hope that they can get others. Yes. They have a very good league also. Mm -hmm. But it was a very bad show from them. Yeah. Coming in 34 games unbeaten and drawing to Sierra yeah. Leone. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> now, the final is here. It is Senegal, Egypt. And everybody is rooting for Senegal uh, in the African continent because it, it is the they have made it to the final now back to back yes. and they're back in the final even last time people were for Senegal but Algeria pipped them to win that one and now against Egypt do you still feel Senegal is the team to lose, to beat the big question is that have they learned from the mistakes that they made last time? Yeah, I guess I really can't yes, draw yes, many mistakes yes. from that. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah, because they lost with an unlucky goal. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. yes. Because the, that ruthlessness uh -huh. for you to get half chances and finish. Yeah. And uh, I, I think, in my opinion, I think they will only carry it if they don't push, uh, uh, they don't allow Egypt to push them into extra time. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. That's what Egypt will do. Yeah. Egypt, they have the gas, they yeah. have the endurance, yeah. uh, they will want to sit back yeah. and uh, frustrate them. Mm, hit make, them when it make, matters. Hit them yeah. on the mm. counter and also yeah. uh, make them, when you are frustrated, you're likely to get a, a, a red card, a yellow uh -huh, card. You see, yes. When those cards accumulate, yes. then you, you, once you get a yellow card and maybe you are a defensive midfielder, you start playing more cautiously. Uh -huh. And you may you not be able to do your job properly. Yeah. So what they need to do, they need to hit Egypt first half, uh -huh. score a goal. Yep. And I, I'm putting my money on Sadio Mane because he has the capability to bring in that individual yeah. brilliance. Uh -huh. yes. And if you look at Senegal, uh, uh, they didn't start off well. They started yeah. with a one nil. Uh -huh. They've been they growing, they've been growing as, 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 the as, as the tournament progresses. progresses. Yeah. And uh, 
you've seen if you play an open game against Senegal, mm -hmm. like the, uh, what the, the, the Burkina Faso did, yes. then Senegal will score goals. Uh -huh. But yeah. now Egypt is not going to come to play an open game. Mm -hmm. Egypt will come to lock that game, yes. wait on the counter. They're very good with the crosses, they're mm -hmm. very good with the counter attack. Mm -hmm. They have yeah. Mosala who has the pace. Yes. So Senegal has to watch out for that. The big thing for Senegal is that they have got calm nerves. Yes, Senegal yeah. have not been rattled so far. Because of experience. Yeah. They have Koulibaly in the defense. They have <laughs> Mendy in the, in the... You know, yes. you see, if you look at Mendy as a goalkeeper, uh -huh. he is a good communicator. Uh -huh. He arranges his, his, his defense, yes. he communicates, he mm -hmm. talks to his players. Yeah. So he's a big factor uh, behind there. They have, not yeah. they have not considered many goals also. Mm -hmm. yes. They have not considered yeah. very many goals. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's actually so funny that those two teams are the ones that have considered the least number the of least goals. Number of yeah. goals. Uh -huh. They have only yeah. considered twice. Uh -huh. So I was looking at Sadio Mane with some of his comments that he made getting into the final. Mm -hmm. And there was so much that was drawn into the Equatorial Guinea game mm -hmm. because they were somehow struggling when it was 1-1. Uh -huh. And the coach had to make a few changes. Uh -huh. We realized that Sadio Mane was dropping back to help uh -huh. the team in defense. Yes, and yeah. he said that as a captain of the team, I'm going to make sure that I give myself up for this team. I need to sacrifice and get myself back defensively. What I've seen from Egypt has been pretty interesting yeah. because when you look at the formation, it started as a 4-3-3, but it's somewhat drifting to a 5-3-2 yeah. uh -huh. and they're really putting blocks of men in there. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, Senegal, as you mentioned, they only scored one goal in mm -hmm. the group stages yeah. Yeah. and then after that they've scored eight goals uh -huh. in three matches. Yeah, in three matches yeah. I really love what they have done with the adjustments because they had COVID issues affecting the team before. Yes. Yeah. They didn't have the Koulibaly's, they didn't have the Edward Mendes, mm -hmm. now they came back into the team. And there was something that I was talking to one of my friends and telling him that I've never seen Bull Idea mm -hmm. play as a right winger. And in those first three games he was playing as a right winger and they were lacking a target man in the middle. Uh -huh. I think the return of Amara Diedi who mm -hmm. has worked so well for the team. He plays for Alanya Sport mm -hmm. and he's got a goal and an assist. And then you have Sadio Mane now, who was playing as a number 10 at that time. Mm -hmm. He's now drifted to his natural he's left, a natural side. left, position. Yeah, yeah. left side position. Yeah. Yeah. He's playing so well, especially when you combine him with Papi Sisse, yes. who's playing so well at that time and he's overlapping. Mm -hmm. And then on the other side, you've got uh, Sa. Mm -hmm. Sa, Sa, yeah. yeah the, the Watford No, the Bayern Munich guy. Uh -huh. oh, yeah. He's playing so well on, on yeah. that right hand side. Yeah. Yeah. Before he was being used as a winger in FLA. Yeah. He's a guy who should be in the defensive end mm -hmm. because he can combine so well now with Ismail Asa yeah. or with Bamba Diang, uh -huh. who's now even got a, a goal and an assist yes. in his first tournament, mm -hmm. in his first time that he's been called for the team. Yeah. So those few adjustments that we've seen from Senegal, they make themselves so strong, mm -hmm. having Kuyate, having Mendy, uh -huh. and having a guy who's now been drafted forward yeah. in, the, in the PSG lad. Yeah, mm. so, yeah. Big one for Senegal there, but they are going against a seven-time champion, that is Egypt. Egypt. One team that knows how to play yeah. Africa Cup of Nations, mm. all, all editions. Egypt has never uh, stopped playing the best of their football. And when it comes to the final, they know how to play it. Yes. But one thing I've got for them man, w that was in the semi-final against Cameroon is that their nerves are not good enough. They saw the coach getting a red card, the yes, assistant yes, getting yes, a yellow pressure, card. The pressure, the pressure is getting on to them. Yes. And, yeah. and uh, maybe yeah. the pressure and together with the excitement. Uh -huh. Because they, they never expected to go past the group, uh, they, they maybe past the semis. Yes. Yeah. Because uh -huh. uh, everybody had ruled them out. Yeah. They are uh -huh. not among the favorites when yes. the tournament began. Yes. Yes. And uh, you see, uh, the excitement, they are not able to calm down. They are uh -huh. not able to settle down. Yes. Uh, you find that also they have a tendency to complain a lot. Uh -huh. Complain yeah. a lot. Uh, but I think it for, was falling for no good. But, yeah. I think, but I think it was justified in that game. Yeah. Yeah. I felt like the referee was a little bit impartial. He was a little bit partial. Yes. In making decisions. He has been receiving lots of backlash. But I, think, but I think he rose to the game because for me all the time they, they fall Football is physical. Yes, that's physical, why people yeah. hate Neymar. Yeah. <laughs> because, like, that's why but, you see, time. but you see, they have, they have also, uh, whatever he's saying is right, because yes. there have also been accusations that Cameroon has uh, has uh, has uh, been favored yeah, to some point through, yes. through, through, throughout the tournament. Uh -huh. yeah, throughout the tournament. Yes. But I think the best officiating that I saw here was Burkina Faso versus uh, yeah. Senegal. Senegal. Yeah. That the Ethiopian, the Ethiopian the guy yeah. was on top of his game. And it's he funny he that deserves that the final. He yeah. deserves the final. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. they have picked Victor Gomez now, the South African, who is going to referee the Final. Final, yes. But having Peter Aware, who's been mentioned a lot, mm. by the way, that uh -huh, he's yes. been good, and yes. the Ethiopian, that should be a good thing for East Africa. I, yes. I, I think the, the problem is, you know, when it comes to officiating selection, it yes. also comes if your team gets onto the, the tournament. 
you, you can get many okay. many chances to okay. your okay. referees can get many chances mm -hmm. that's why it was never given a chance even yeah. i think uh, the south african guy i think it's because of uh, motsepe yeah. that's yeah. why yeah. i yeah. got yeah. a chance yeah. to yeah. but <laughs> if it was going if it was going to be natural selection mm -hmm. it is going to be a referee whose team his country yeah. was actually was in the actually tournament yeah. that he gets the yeah, final but even what you said about them complaining a lot yes. it's somewhat true because even now when you go to the news yeah. they're saying that they should have the final on Monday, Monday. because <laughs> Senegal, uh, Senegal, uh, Senegal will have an extra day what I'm wondering is that even if it goes on Monday Senegal they will still, still have an extra day because they played the day earlier yeah. so you see, <laughs> normally you have given two days to recover well, I think it's they, are, they, are, they are mind games they are mind, they are mind games, games. Yeah. Uh, 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 they are just playing mind games yes. uh, before the tournament begins you uh -huh. feel yeah. that you could even see Salah laughing when yeah. the, the manager was getting into the field exactly you feel like these guys we are now Getting uh, to pushing head. them mm. to a corner. It yes. hit you yeah. when you least expect. Egypt without the coach, mm -hmm. will it be tough for them? I don't feel like it because yeah. one of my friends, Zachary Gouda, was mentioning uh -huh. it. Yeah. When you look at that bench, it's so rich of players that experience. have played. Yeah, yes, experience, have, experience. yeah, they've played there before. Even yeah. El Shenai, uh -huh. he was there. Yes. He, was, he was training with the, the goalkeeper now. By yeah. the way, much he's credit. now the goalkeeping coach of Egypt. Yeah, yes. yeah. and credit to Gabanski on uh -huh. the job that he's doing uh -huh. because they've yes. had multiple injuries in their goalkeeping yeah. and they're there. So what you saw after the coach was taken to the stands, yeah. The other coach was still in communication. He had uh -huh. earphones yes. on, yeah. Yeah. and he was still communicating. And you could see the man who demands lots of attention, uh -huh. and he, he demands respect because I remember he pulled off a player, and he was so mad with him. But mm. he went off to the bench, and mm. he was sobbing uh, alone. Yeah. So I feel like they have lots of quality in there. They they have around five men mm -hmm. that can lead this team. So okay. I don't feel it's going to be much of a miss. And with them communicating every time, then. So easy. Uh, and that, that, that brings in another angle yeah. that us as Kenyans uh, we should uh, we should now have learned from there. Yeah. Because look at all the teams that have been there. Look at the involvement of former players. Uh -huh. Former yes. players in the Nigerian team. Mm -hmm. uh, former players in the Cameroonian team. You could mm -hmm. see even Eto coming and talking mm -hmm. to the team. Yes. You see, ours we have to find a way in which we can <laughs> drop in the former players. Remember uh -huh. the last AFCON that we, we, we went to? Yes. There were accusations that uh, uh, the, the, the Federation, uh, we didn't carry enough former players. Uh -huh. So instead uh -huh. we carried our, <laughs> our uh -huh. other uh -huh. girlfriend. Uh -huh. yes, 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 yes. <laughs> you see, that yeah. former player, mm -hmm. when you look at the Egyptian bench, you look at and all of them players are who have in. been there, mm -hmm. have done that, have won this league, yeah. have won this, this, this tournament uh, at yes. given time. Uh -huh. So they'll come and calm you down. Yes. When you list, when, when you expect that yeah. in the dressing room, you have leaders you look up to. Yeah. Look at the Nigerian bench. We had former players there. Yeah, even mm -hmm. the coach. Yes. Yeah. We had former players there. Mm -hmm. Look at the involvement of, uh, as I stated earlier, yeah. Samuel Eto. Yes. Every. Game, he was there. Half yes. time, he's talking to those mm -hmm. players. Yeah. He has been there. And he's done that. You know, talking of Samuel Leto, yes. uh, he brought an issue that uh, I think every player in Cameroon now is on a, a wage bill cap. Yes, he's yes, supposed yes, to yes. play. Uh, be paid a minimum amount. Exactly. That is the future of African football. That's now. the future of African football, and that's why I'm Even challenging some yes. players yeah. in this country. Uh -huh. They need to step up. Don't yeah. just say we want to, to be to, to, to be considered. Mm -hmm. No, come with policies. Yeah. Look at Samuel Leto. He's come in as the president of the federation. Mm -hmm. He's put it because he knows mm -hmm. players have been suffering because of poor wages. Yes. So I have to protect my players. Mm -hmm. Now, once you do that, yeah. you strengthen the league. When you strengthen the league, then you bring in more talent. Up. Yeah. So under 23, under 20, you'll have players who can be able to compete. Yeah. And players won't have that desire to go to Europe yes. at an early age. Because yeah. our African players, some of them, they run to Europe when they are still so uh, so, so young so, yeah. that they cannot now uh, be able to blossom into 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 good players. If yeah. you look at the likes of Didier Drogba, mm -hmm. the likes of... Uh, Sadio Mane, they have come in the Premier League in their late 20s. Yes. And they have done so well. Yeah. Now you find that others will rush to, to, to the Premier League in their, in their 1920s. Yeah. You see, that's a problem. You're still yes. struggling with mm -hmm. yourself. You, you haven't even understood yourself. Yeah. So you blunder a lot. Yeah. So that, that, that one, we should look at it. And you, you got to give it to Cameroon for the organization of the African football because nobody thought that Cameroon was going to host this showpiece. But under, now, strict, under, under, under COVID, yeah, under yeah, COVID yeah, 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 yeah. there's a region I think that is in war in Cameroon State. <laughs> yeah. But they have maintained, uh, they have brought a very good tournament. Yeah, I think I would put it at around 75%. They've yeah. done a really great job. Except the, the problem yeah, that they had, uh, yeah, 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 the stadium stampede. stampede. Yeah, 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 but yeah. so far, it has been a good tournament for yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah, even you're looking at the adjustments that they've made ever since. Mm -hmm. I yes. was hearing about them 
making sure that the fans have settled in an hour uh-huh. earlier an hour yeah. before yeah. the game yeah. starts okay. and then they are restricting children mm-hmm. they've got good security around yes. the place that mm-hmm. you don't have any place where you have the crowd that is uh-huh. overpowering the, the officers yes. it's, it's been a brilliant job for the Cameroonians I think that's the gesture with the players uh, after they, they had their bonuses they decided to donate yeah, yeah, it to, yeah. to, to the people yeah, who suffered yes. that's a good gesture yeah. and uh, uh, it's good for football yeah. and uh, as 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 we are saying here, we didn't expect that the tournament will be this good. Yes. Because there was a lot of criticism about uh-huh, the whole yes, thing, COVID, yeah. what have you, yeah. and yeah. everything. Mm-hmm. But uh, so far, so good. Who is going to win it for you? Senegal. <laughs> <laughs> for you, who is going to win it for you? I'll make it interesting so that you can have something to discuss about <laughs> <and say. laughs> Next week. Yeah, <laughs> next week. Yeah, I'm going Egypt. Yeah. Yeah. I'll go for Egypt. Even though I Egypt. don't feel like they're going to win it. Yes. I'll, I'll go Egypt just to be opposite. <laughs> 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 we'll be here next week to talk about who is going to win that final. We've got Eric Aganya here for Senegal. Some guitar is going for Egypt. For me, I'm waiting for the one who's going to win it because I put my money on Senegal in 2019. Yeah, I, I don't want to cry again. Yeah, we need, <laughs> win, winning, winning the first African is the hardest job to do. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. this has to be the time. As you mm. said those weeks ago, yeah. we talked about them being the golden generation. Yeah, uh-huh, yeah very true. Yeah, it's, it's either now or never. Yeah, yeah. this is the moment. Yeah. They need to seize it. Yeah. And mm. still, the tablets are still on Ali Yes. If he doesn't win it again, it's, it's now off. gone. Yeah. <laughs> One of the best coaches Africa has produced, Ali Osise, former player of Senegal, captain in 2002, getting them to the final of that tournament. And now, as the coach has got them to two finals, 2019, and now against Egypt in 2020. Who are going to win it? We'll be giving you all the highlights on Monday. But we'll be here next week on the touchline to talk about how that final has gone. It is the touchline. I'm Robert Osoro. Enjoy the rest of your viewing. Good afternoon.